does not file it in accordance with the Section 35 of the Trade Unions Act. Section 36 and 37 of the Trade Unions Act say that a failure to file those annual returns constitutes a criminal offense in respect of every member of the union, every executive of the union. Before you go there, let me say to, let me say to your viewers, we have been receiving from the PPP government since 2006, $5 million. <laughs> and every time we went to the ministry to um, requisition for the next $5, 000, $5 million for the next year, we had to ensure that the previous year was cleared and this passes through the PS. And that's how they release the $5 million. So when they talk about the audited statements, and uh, every year we have to clear before we get the $5 million. And let me make it clear, not what Priya said in Parliament. Priya is very dishonest. And then the other idiots who can't even tell you what the problem start. There is no problem between Rhonda and I. As far as I know, there is no problem between Rhonda and Lola, Rhonda and Fata, Rhonda and Melly. None! But she come out here and started to go on and hair straight and hair kinky and who ain't like Kotick and who ain't like Mohammed and how all of this you business? He started to present arguments upon the invitation of the court to show neither of these orders should be granted. There were two. One sought to restrain the government from deducting salaries from the striking teachers. That's the first one. And the second one sought to direct the government to cease the deduction of, cease the decision rather, to deduct union dues from the teachers' wages and salaries and pay it over to the union. How do you feel that the Auditor General inserted himself in this matter from a political or within a political context in order to give some sort of credibility to the argument that the People's Progressive Party was making rather than the Auditor General in that instance, he was acting very, very unprofessional. And it would lead one to say that maybe his um, his hands are in the pockets of the PPP. We, I don't know, like we, we, we running on water or something in this place. Any and everybody could just jump out here, do whatever they feel like, however they feel like. Baby girl, I sell him a barbecue. You hear? I go into all them communities where my friends on social media finish buying out my barbecue. I go in and sell my barbecue, give my barbecue to them churning in the communities. Right now I don't sell over 200 love. Yeah. If the employee decides to withhold their labor and strike, a right which they have, a freedom which they have, then the employer is entitled to withhold pay. I feel so good right now because every time I move around this town, I have two or three, what do you call them, superintendents, inspectors, whoever they be, with um, the ones in the keiki with their black cord and so on. I have them escorting me to wherever I want to go, to my car, from my car, to this point, are to that point. Are they escorting you or are they monitoring you? Are they escorting you or are they monitoring you? Yes, yes, that's what they're doing. I feel good and you know that that is coming no, because okay, they are... On. You they said that are carrying out political instruction. So if <clears throat> teachers continue to strike, then the employer, who is the government, must continue to have the power to deduct their salaries. Oh, well, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Before you go there, let me, say to, let me say to your viewers, we have been receiving from the PPP government since 2006, $5 million. <laughs> and every time we went to the ministry to um, requisition for the next $5, 000, $5 million for the next year, we had to ensure 
that the previous year was cleared and this passes through the PS and that's how they release the five million dollars so when they talk about the audited statements and uh, every year we have to clear before we get the five million dollars and let me make it clear not what Priya said in parliament Priya is very dishonest and the speaker allows it and he allowed it then Priya is saying that the five million dollars is to assist teachers who, who fall into hard patches and so on nothing like that it is clear that that $5 million is to assist with training, training, and not the foolishness that Priya is saying. But of course, Priya wants to look good, and, and she always feels that, you know, flouncing around the place with words and so on makes her look good. But I want you to know that $5 million is cleared every year by the Ministry of Education. Because if they don't clear it, it will be an audit query for them. So we have to clear that every year with the Ministry of Education. And it has been happening since 2006. Um, did that That's not very was valid that point given it. under the APNU government? It was it continued? It was continued under the APNU government. And the same thing, we have to clear every year before we get the new year. No, Let me ask you as a member of parliament, hold on, hold on, hold on, Gannis, hold on. As a member of parliament, correct, and general secretary of the union, how do you feel that the auditor general inserted himself in this matter from a political or within a political context in order to give some sort of credibility to the argument that the People's Progressive Party was making rather than? The Auditor General in that instance, he was acting very, very unprofessional. And it would lead one to say that maybe his um, his hands are in the pockets of the PPP, if, if that's how you want to put it. One can clearly say that because as a professional, <laughs> if I was asked that question, then I would have, th the next question I would have asked is, look, I can give you this one, I can give you this one, I can give you the other one, I can tell you how many others are in breach why is it that you want to have this one but this is what is happening in this country we have corrupt officers who are manning this country in various positions and so this is what we get from them professional the people have become political people the guyana police force if you look at the operations of the guyana police force right now i um, i feel so good right now because every time i move around this town i have two or three we call them superintendents inspectors whoever they be with um the ones in the keiki with their black cord and so on i have them escorting me to wherever i want to go to my car from my car to this point are to they that escorting point you or they're monitoring good. you are they I escorting feel... you or they're monitoring you yes yes that's what they're doing i feel good and you know that that is coming no, because on, they on. are you they said that's what they're doing. Political instructions. What are they doing? They're they're escorting you or they're monitoring you. What to say? Like well, they're monitoring they're monitoring me. If I have to move from one point to go to my car, they're walking alongside me. And you know, of course, as a teacher, I talk with them and and I share so much with them. Are they following you? Are they following you? If you drive your car, are they driving behind you. Are they following? Well, let me tell you, special branches vehicles. They have been driving behind me, and I know a few of them, and that's why I can say that they have been driving behind me so it's a whole big monitoring of Coretta mcdonald wherever she is like uh, brother dorga said i went to esequibo on a thursday i went there on thursday by the time i got there and they recognized that i was there they started interfering with the live feed by the time i left there the next day the teachers were locked out from the that avenue there that you would go through to get to the department of education and the multilateral school they were locked out from that avenue the gates were locked police were in front there they blocked the teachers from going there um prevented them from going under the under the shed that they were using so everywhere i go they're monitoring me so you're saying that the Guyana police force is now obstructing the teachers from participating in the strike yes that's exactly what they're doing let me tell you what happened yesterday um on monday the strike the strike the conference opened on monday on the first day we were in between that little street with the lighthouse what conference um, I, the energy conference they got big international energy conference going on down here where we yeah, have the, the government and, and so on at the marriott so okay. we were we they barricaded the place and we were out there 
every time I attempted to move, you saw the police on their radio on their radio sets, and they were they were following they were following me. Yesterday and today we were at the Yumanayano. I attempted to walk through. And I'm sure you saw the one with, with um, on Rebel Nima Flu Best, where they prevented her. They said no opposition MP could go to the conference. I attempt, I parked my car way beyond the Pegasus Hotel. Because they said to me, I couldn't park anywhere alongside. So I had to go park way out, way out there by the bandstand. Coming from the bandstand to go join my colleagues who are standing just beyond the, the Yomaniano. I was greeted by a police officer who came walking towards me and then he said to me I couldn't go I couldn't walk past this patch to go to to go to the Yamanayana to meet my colleagues then mind you the barricades that they had on Monday they were right at the corner um, as soon as you pass the Yamanayana they were right at the corner there yesterday they were beyond the Yamanayana right by the corner of what you call the street there with when you're heading to the um, the commissioner's office they were right there and so we couldn't pass that corner there that corner runs in line with the um court of appeal we couldn't pass there the barricades came forward and and so every time coretta mcdonald make a move the officers are there and they're saying look 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 she's going there you're seeing them they're on their radio sets do you, and feel, coretta, do you feel like you're living in russia um, sometimes I feel that way, but then I have to bully them and I have to tell them I am a Guyanese. Stop walking behind me. Go behind the Venezuelans that y'all get y'all live got living illegally in this country. Walk behind them. Don't walk behind me. Go look for the bandits who who doing all kinds of things. Go look Why for them. I, I well, in this video, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. We're gonna hear both sides. We're gonna hear the honorable minister mcdonald and we're gonna hear the attorney general we're gonna hear both sides and we're gonna gather and come to our own understanding so that we could get a better clarity as to what's really going on with this teacher strike the gtu the court case and the arguments between both parties miss mcdonald is stating that you just get a five million dollars every year and the only way that the other year five million dollar does release is if they report and give information on what was done with the five million from the prior year on the other side we hear the attorney general arguing the point that this money has not been audited or presented for almost 20 years now 20 years the information has not been presented see if this information has not been presented for 20 years and then miss mcdonald is stating that every year it has to be presented and the information has to be documented for the other year money to be released somewhere in the middle somebody ain't giving we all the information or is not telling us the truth and guy needs got sense so we can figure out is what really going on we're gonna get to the bottom of this because we even hearing now that the police are infringing on the rights of the teachers to be out in the street protesting we're hearing from the honorable minister and we're even seeing it in a lot of the videos because we broadcast the live protests the live strike protests in the streets daily i know most persons might have heard about this situation already but for who haven't odessa primus is gonna give you a clarity and bring you up to speed and she's here to clear her name get into the conversation right now and let me hear it from odessa primus and she's gonna give us the clarity on what's really going on with this whole situation how it got started and how some people might not have had nothing to do with it originally let's hear some point as a people we got to come to some degree of consciousness and move from this black people coolie people ppp pnc apnu afc nonsense then y'all want blame we is Melly fault is lola fault is fata fault is everybody fault 
You hear? It's Odessa fault that people on the internet fall in stupidness. I don't even come live. I don't even come live on Facebook because me looking for popularity. I ain't looking for nobody like me. I just want them a corner and show I make provision so my children in this life. You understand me? Me concerned about all of them fanciness. And oh my God, I got 10,000 followers. I am bothered. Anybody who know me could tell you. I don't depend on no parading about the place. And I would never stop talking to nobody because of the differences. So you don't come out here and tell me I'm a hypocrite. I call critic. When critic he when when he and Mohammed had this story, first the critic was going on. Because I called Mohammed, he said they ain't got no story. You understand? Critic said no man, they ain't got no story. Sorry, good. This time I heard the thing, I called him because you know what? I gotta give people the, the benefit of the doubt. You don't make it seem like I call him critic because I going against Mohammed, or I call him Mohammed because I going against critic. Lola and, and, and Melly had a story from Facebook here. Melly has been my friend for very many years. You understand me? I always be the one for jump out here and say, you know what? Y'all call it quits. Don't fight the man left it alone and so. Me! Me! I come out here and say, y'all chill. Now, Lola was not my friend. Lola's just somebody I didn't know. And I didn't even know the story was getting wild with Lola and Melly. You know what? I do I pick up my phone and I call Lola? I say, man, Lola, girl. Um, I see I got the story and so on and thing, and we talk about it. I said, man, you know what? As two things, yeah, I should let it go. Blam, blam, blam. Lola said, no. I told Melly the same thing. I said, Melly, yeah, I'll just let the story go. She said, no. I said, me. When the shots start to fire, my fat ass will get shoot. I you try that? I out of the way. But at no point there's got nothing going on that I don't call and say, hey, y'all call it quits, y'all don't fight up and thing and whatever. No point, you ice pass me. You ice pass me upon this place, eh, so. And you're too friggin' destructive. And Guyanese sit down and let politicians and jackasses like Rondo come out here and cause division and cause strife and all kind of thing in this place. You understand me? And then the other idiots who can't even tell you where the problem start. There is no problem between Rondo and I. As far as I know, there is no problem between Ronda and Lola, Ronda and Fata, Ronda and Melly. None! But she come out here eh, and start to go on and hair straight and hair kinky and who ain't like Kotick and who ain't like Mohammed and how all of this you business? Then who is supporting teachers? Listen, at the end of the day, this nation depends on the teachers. And I don't care who vex, who like it, or who don't like it. I am saying pay the Ross whole teachers. And let me move forward as a nation, you understand me? Because Pray ain't losing nothing. Airfan ain't losing nothing. Barrett ain't losing nothing. Ronda have nothing to lose. It's we children punishing this place. The nation's children are punishing in this place. And don't start by me children because I go in private school. Don't play with me. I have to send them there because I, I got to take into consideration that Priya ain't going to want to pay the teachers. That the schools are not up to standard. And I don't want that for my children. Fortunately, I can't even say I could afford. I just work hard. I just work hard. And then you come out here, sir, so, like the jackass of the 24th century. I run up on Facebook. Oh, all of that is do is sell barbecue. So what, bitch? I got one barbecue a year. You hear what I'm telling you? And at the end of the day, if I want to sell barbecue, if I want to sell yam, if I want to sell edo, let me tell you something. There ain't got no job on the face of this art hey, that I could say is belittling to me. None. None. I got children I got to take care of. You understand what I'm telling you? And I don't care what it is and when it came, I am going to do it to ensure that my children are taken care of. So you don't try to come out here and try to belittle nobody that's selling things to provide for the, for the family. Don't you do it. Bitch. You are spass people. And then you come out. Oh, them is the ones that talk about women's rights. So you mean for tell me that jackass must run out here and tell me what she want, do me what she want, and I must sit down in a car and not say nothing or not do nothing? I I pass my raw soul on this internet too. So me I wait out here with your shit. 
I got respect for anybody. I had a neighbor, Anita. Anita was a security guard, still a security guard today. When you see Anita press the uniform and walk out in pride. Who's to say Anita managing a bank? Who are you, Anita provided for your family? Who are you to come out here now and try to belittle anybody because of what to do? Them jackasses out here, sir. They ain't got nothing to say about though. But they want to run up to my fat ass to tell me what I must say and how I must feel and what I must respond to. Tell your mother what to respond to! Oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. We, I don't know, like we, we, we running on water or something in this place. Any and everybody could just jump out here. Do whatever they feel like, however they feel like. Baby girl, I sell them a barbecue. You hear? I go into all them communities where my friends on social media finish buying out my barbecue. I go in and sell my barbecue, give my barbecue to them churning in the communities. Right now I don't sell over 200 love. You understand me? I got communities on standby. Because I sell it all. I go in every way. If I go go into 10 communities and give 100 churning per community, this is what I'm doing. Because nobody can't tell me but thing and who ain't doing and who doing. I, I, I pass people in this place. I don't know how we could move forward as a country when we got jackasses like the come out here. Oh Odessa, um, not Odessa. Things perfect in Guyana. Guyana is lazy. People come out here and disrespect with teachers. Disrespect the teachers. They may like walk. They may this. I just pass these teachers in this place. I pass them. Who is lazy? Why they can't make the money do? They're working for the money all the time. Three hundred dollars was a pound of chicken. It's five hundred and something and six hundred now. Why the ass the money gonna do? How we gonna do? How? Yep. So that's just let we know exactly how the situation start and how some people get involved and how some people wasn't even supposed to be involved, but they just automatically put themselves in the situation. Well, that's to give you all the clarity that we need and everything we need to understand about this situation as of now i think we just get it from odessa right there plus she let we know exactly how she feel about what's going on right now with this teacher strike because the situation everybody is getting to understand directly is what's going on with these teachers and the fact that they've been crying out and calling for better wages for years and years and it's not just with this party that's in power right now even when the opposition was the ruling party the same strike and they were crying out for betterment so now with the oil money the teachers them is saying look we deserve and we need something better we can't survive with what you are trying to give us but the honorable attorney general has a whole different perspective he is trying to make sure that the government does not have to award none of these striking teachers, none of these teachers that go out on strike with any money for the days that they strike. Plus, you want to make sure that, guess what? All of them in the GTU find themselves in custody for that two plus billion dollars that allegedly they misplaced and mishandling the attorney general is saying look it's been 20 years now you are collecting this money y'all ain't got nothing for sure for it <clears throat> and since y'all ain't got nothing for sure and no real audited information for all these years that y'all keep collecting this money and we collecting this money giving it to y'all guess what we ain't collecting this money no more plus we ain't giving no money to no teacher that was out striking but it's a good thing that the court stopped them but let me hear the attorney general tell us directly how this situation go down and what's the plans for the government moving forward with this teacher strike do they plan to bring it to an end are they going to take it to court and stretch it out in litigation or are they going to make sure that our teachers are compensated and give them a livable wage so that this strike can come to an end and the educational system can be back where it's supposed to be at the top functioning educational systems in 
the Caribbean. Let's hear the Attorney General right now as he gets into this information for us. And the codes, everything that went down in the court and how the government plans are moving forward. He started to present arguments upon the invitation of the court to show neither of these orders should be granted. There were two. One sought to restrain the government from deducting salaries from the striking teachers. That's the first one. And the second one sought to direct the government to cease the deduction of, cease the decision rather, to deduct union dues from the teachers wages and salaries and pay it over to the union. The, because we had made a decision to stop offering the service. <laughs> Excuse me. And with the permission of the judge, I was allowed to present arguments. And I did so. Very lengthy arguments. And I showed very clearly that the law in Guyana and the rest of the Caribbean is that the relationship which exists between public servants <coughs> and teachers and the government is one of a employee employer relationship and the law is in relation to strike if the employee decides to withhold their labor and strike a right which they have a freedom which they have then the employer is entitled to withhold pay it's a very simple equation you bring to the table your labor and i am required in an employment contract once i employ you and you provide that labor i must pay for it if you withhold your labor i am entitled to withhold my pay that's a simple law that governs the entire caribbean including guyana and this has come up in many, many cases and have been decided upon. The textbook writers writing the law of employment in the Caribbean have all expressed the consistent and uniform view that that is the law. So if <clears throat> teachers continue to strike then the employer, who is the government, must continue to have the power to deduct their salaries. So the conservatory order that was being sought to restrain the employer from exercising his power of withholding pay was being suspended. The judge felt that if he is to grant, or rather refuse to grant the order or the orders, then he would, ha he would be determining the entire case at the interim stage, a position that I don't agree with, obviously. And the case law authorities say that when you apply for a conservatory order, you have to show an arguable case. You have to show that you have a prima facie case, that you have a serious issue to be determined. And in my view, the law is extraordinarily clear on this issue. No work, no pay. And I believe that it is wrong to order one side to perform their side of the bargain when the other side is not performing their side of the bargain. And this is not a sterile exercise, filing annual returns. 
the annual returns must include a statement of their assets, their liabilities, and their income, and how that income is being spent and accounted for. And that statement must be given to the membership. And anyone who makes a deposit in the union's account. The government certainly is making a deposit in the union's account. They have never served a copy of their annual return to the government. They have not filed it in accordance with the Section 35 of the Trade Unions Act. Section 36 and 37 of the Trade Unions Act say that a failure to file those annual returns constitutes a criminal offense in respect of every member of the union, every executive of the union. So it's a criminal offense. They have not filed since 2004. That's 20 years, two decades. So you expect me to continue to deduct people's monies, deposit it with you, and for 20 years, you are not accounting for it. The union members don't know what you're doing with their money. And it's some seven or eight million dollars a month or whatever it is. Somebody totaled it, they say it's nearly two billion or over two billion dollars. If the government deducts these monies wrongfully, and it is subsequently found out, or the court rules, that the deductions were unlawful, then the government obviously has the capacity to repay it. But look at the reverse. If the teachers receive money, and it is found that those monies were unlawfully received, then the teachers will have to pay it back. How are they going to pay it back? They're not going to deposit back money. It's the government again that will have to now do accumulated deductions. The union Jews. That is even more problematic. If the union Jews are deducted and transmitted to the union, remember there are now teachers who do not want their union Jews to be deducted anymore. A lot of people didn't know this. This strike and this revelation brought a lot of knowledge to people's attention. There are many, many teachers now who feel that this union is not acting in their best interest do not want to contribute to this. But you're now going to deduct their monies because if the government is allowed to sever this relationship, then these teachers will now have to voluntarily go to the union. Right? But, and, 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 and if now that the government has to deduct, then these people are losing their money. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. How the union is not going to give back the government the money. So, you had those countervailing and prevailing factors that I believe ought to have aggregate to persuade the judge not to grant the orders but but I was unable to persuade the judge but as I said the matter has been brought forward now because this these the grant of these conservatory orders disposes of this aspect of the proceedings what is left now is a substantive action. Hopefully, I am able to persuade the judge that the deduction from the salary is lawful and those deductions will then have to be made. And secondly, that the government should be allowed to continue its decision of refusing to deduct these union Jews. Mr. 
infused agave the most nutritious replacement for sugar who exchange hands with the vehicle not vehicles that were used james singh didn't do that james singh allow it to lie low because james singh got a hand a hand james singh got a hand in the cocaine passing